Welcome if you're just joining us. We are at the famous Heidelberg Project, the entire block of Heidelberg Street in the city of Detroit, one of the more famous landmarks here. Retired TV reporter Bill Proctor's mission, freeing innocent people behind bars. He's hosting an online fundraiser for a man locked away in Muskegon. It's the art community in the entire city of Detroit stepping up for a cause today. And that cause is a fellow named Ray Gray. He is a wrongfully convicted man who has been in the Michigan prison system since 1973. We're selling our friend Ray Gray's artworks. We actually have 50 of them. We're working really hard to find $15,000. The money to cover legal costs for a new hearing. Supporters of Ray Gray, now 68, say they've got evidence that would clear him of a murder 47 years ago. Uh, obviously some of Ray's work is still with him in prison. But his wife is lucky enough to have 70, maybe 80 pieces. And we've chosen a few and we're, we're making them available. What's this one now? Blue Madonna. There's the original. A man looking inside himself. The doors represent decisions. Open one door and you go a certain way. Open another, you go another way. And I think he's a really good example of how people can actually teach themselves incredible skills. At the University of Michigan, Nora Kronitsky and Janie Paul are part of the Prison Creative Arts Project, PCAP. Paul was there from the start 25 years ago. For a while, we were having a record number of prisoners in general, but that number has gone down. But have you seen the number in of artists go down? No. Oh, oh no. no. No, no, no. It's way, it's, it's just exponentially increasing because of the show. Mm -hmm. The show? Every year, PCAP curates the best art from 28 Michigan prisons. Thousands come to see. 700 works submitted this time, but this time COVID has stopped the show. In the, in the beginning, the work, there was more work that was what you traditionally call prison art, like tattoo related images, girly pictures, motorcycles, things like that. And then there were a few artists who were doing incredibly unique work that was just uh, idiosyncratic. Here are examples from this year's exhibition in an online preview. Not what some collectors are looking for, so-called murderabilia, ghoulish stuff by the most heinous of criminals. Those are not these. And these, according to the curators in Ann Arbor, are truly fine art. Do these works get sold? Is there a market for it? Absolutely. So that's another really important part of, of the annual exhibition. Um, at the artist's prerogative, all of the artwork is for sale, and the proceeds um, of every sale go back directly to the artists themselves. I think that last year, the cumulatively um, PCAP sold over $25,000 worth of art. I think the total was closer to $27,000. This is the one I was telling you about. Moving them around makes me uh, nervous. <laughs> I think if the DIA curators saw what you're doing here, they wouldn't feel too good. Oh. Barbara Gray first met Ray Gray in the late 70s, part of an arts and prison program even before PCAP came along. I had very little talent, but I did have the ability to teach somewhat. They eventually married. Hello, Ray. They talk every day. Hey, hey. Um, You're still negative? Yeah, yeah, I got a thing back today. It was negative. Fortunately, we don't have capital punishment in Michigan because he'd be dead. But right now, he's in Muskegon Correctional Facility that it's almost like a death sentence because it's a hot spot of the prison system. It seems like more people with COVID-19 than without. Gray entered prison at 21, a boxing champ, could have gone pro. When a man he met in passing said to be a drug dealer was shot dead, Gray was ID'd, charged, and convicted. To this day, Gray says he's innocent. Years. So you were painting before you went to prison? Yeah, I uh, was intending to go to art school at that time. I've been involved in art since I was about five years old. Really? Yeah, my father was an artist, and, uh, and my mother. Does art help you as you go about your day? Do you do a lot of it on a given day? Yes, it's sort of my religion. It, it helps. It helps greatly. I guess you can call 
have some escapism, but I don't look at it in that manner. You know, sometimes I paint things that I don't even fully understand myself. I mean, it's almost like a, a different entity or something. It's as if something else takes over. It's, it's like a relationship between you and your painting. It helps to keep him sane. At one point he said it was like he was behind glass and he was screaming and nobody could hear him. Now it seems like he's getting through and his paintings kind of speak for him even when he can't. Well, Ray's been in the show for a long time. He is highly respected. He's taught a lot of people. His work is really skillful. And I think what makes it exceptional is his sort of incisive critique, like his social critique. There's a painting of Governor Snyder in a bottle that's about the Flint water crisis. There's this fish with a gas mask on. You know, I mean, he's, he's really kind of brilliant at these metaphors where he, you don't really have to say anything. You just get, get it and you feel his conviction behind it. Many of his pieces aren't just portraits, they tell a story. And I think that's another thing that makes him different. What about the Ray Gray story? Will that change? His supporters want to bring evidence never presented showing he couldn't have done the killing. They say they know who really did, although that man has died. How are things going in terms of you getting out of prison? Well, I talked to my attorney yesterday, and there were some, some real positive things just began to happen. There were some things that are being re-looked at. In the meantime, more paintings wait to be sold for the Free Ray Gray Legal Fund. So far, they've raised about 2500 of the $15,000 goal. He honed his talent over many years on the inside. I can only imagine how wonderful his work would be had he had a chance to attend that art school and to flourish on the outside as a free man. We just could not substantiate his claims of innocence. And so therefore, we denied relief in the case. That was a recommendation of my team. Um, but in looking at that and reading over everything myself as well, and my team felt this way as well, um, we think this is a good candidate for commutation. Um, uh, for many reasons, uh, chief, it's been a, it's been a long time. It's been I think 48 years, and you know there are some. Um, even though we couldn't substantiate the claims of innocence, we feel that this is a case where we would be pushing very hard to support any claim of commutation that he chooses to make.